One thing you wrote about in your essay, which is a brilliant essay, The Kings in Stone, Shadows and Rulers, was that you said, uh, why have monuments stimulated irony as well as admiration? Right. So I wanted to ask what you meant by that. Well, by irony, I mean that we, most of us, when we see the Egyptian monuments like the pyramids, we think any cultured person seeing this stuff would be very impressed. The testament to an ancient civilization on this enormous monumental scale. But other observers uh, can look at it in a more jaundiced way. And they could think, oh, well, what kind of human labor was required to be forced to make this? And what kind of overweening um, view of the world is this of the people who did this done, dedicated this huge monument dedicated to a single ruler? So other people see uh, what I call irony. It's, things that contradict the positive impression you can give. I also love that quote from John Milton, so I wanted to get it in. Do you want to repeat that quote? Um, let's see. What needs my Shakespeare for his honored bones, the labor of an age in piled stones, or that his sacred relics should be hid beneath the star ye pointing pyramid? So it's sarcastic about the pyramids. And yeah. He's a member of the cultural leader of Egypt, of Britain at the time. Yeah, but, but Egypt was already a great tourist center. In the Even, 30s. Oh, oh yeah. for the French, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the attraction of Egypt? The monuments. The monuments. <laughs> Absolutely the monuments. That's why people... Most visitors didn't actually like Egypt in those days very much, but they really wanted to see the pyramids and temples and all that kind of stuff. Yes, what, what I saw in your photographs was a kind of challenge to the monuments because you presented them to us through your photographic images. You presented them to us as topics, images that belied their appearance. Their appearance is that they are massive, monumental, permanent, immobile structures uh, that evoke a whole civilization uh, through this, these images. And when they, you look at your images of Egyptian monuments, their impressiveness still comes through. They're still part of the topic. But the way you allow shadows to control a lot of the visual imagery that's there, the way that you... Um, I kept saying the way that you make visitors to the monuments, or Egyptians who are responsible for guarding the monuments, uh, they're sometimes crystal clear images of people, and then sometimes they're almost like ghosts. They're transparent. You can see the monument through them, uh, especially the tourists who did that. Um, so th I think what I was trying to convey through the text that I prepared, um, trying to convey how your mode of presenting these images, capturing and presenting these images, how it, it raises questions about the monuments. We think of them, as I said, as these kind of monuments dedicated to eternal display and because they're so massive. Um, but you to take photographs of them where sometimes they're intact, but sometimes they're not intact. You can see that bits of this great monument are simply not there anymore. You can also see these uh, people who come and go as visitors and they glide in and out of the images. Why, why, why is it that the people are less permanent than the images of the monuments? You, you expect people to be solid too, and they're not. Uh, and sometimes the monuments don't look as solid as all that. So it seemed to me that these, this imagery attracted people's attention, would it, would it attract people's attention. Uh, but the, the, the imagery kind of raised questions. And the one that I found most interesting, the question that came to my mind in the end, not for, uh, early on, uh, but in the end, was there was a, 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 a tension here between issues of what was permanent and what was transitory. Um, 
the monuments are permanent and yet they, in some of the images they kind of start to melt away or they're deeply shadowed so you can't actually, they disappeared from sight. Uh, or there are the modern day visitors who we think of as solid people and they are transient people. They come, they're present, they go away and your images convey that because they actually make them fade. They, they, they fade away. And then of course dams and water and nature eroding things. You mean in their impact on the monuments? Yeah. No, yeah, sure, that's also part of the story um, uh, that is typical even today because even today we have a lot of Egyptian monuments which are above ground and are known and are part of the responsibility of the Ministry of Antiquities to preserve and guard and make accessible. But new monuments are found all the time in Egypt. Often they're not complete, they're not intact, but they may, people may be building a high school or laying out a, a highway or all kinds of things. And um, uh, they can, in the course of those clearances, they may well uncover not an entire building, but many, many decorated blocks from such a building. And the indications that the plan is there if someone comes along and excavates and draws it. Um, so, so even today, there is the disappearance of monuments and their reappearance uh, through these things. And the contractors are always very unhappy when that happens. They're working on a high school or something because they have to report it to the antiquities organization who will in investigate it before they release the area. You've got a, Can you see that? We've got groups of tourists visiting yeah. the temples of Thebes. That's the temple of Thebes. And they're, they're walking over the roof slabs. Those are what the, some of the enormous roof, stone slabs that the Egyptians put on the top of temples to be their roofs. Oh. So it's part of the temple and they're walking across it as if it was a bridge, which is not its intent. What is this structure in the back? It's kind of yeah. hard to see it. Oh, baby. 